What is cranking wieners? We are back on the yak. This is the new kayak second journey. Uh, I'm actually really digging this thing. It's it's a lot different. It takes a lot to get used to these pedals. It's like riding a bike and also fishing at the same time. Uh, but anyway, that's all beside the point. Today we are fishing yet another pretty strange spot. Uh, we are under a huge highway right now in a river that is pretty nasty, but from what I've been told is full of fish. There's lots of shad jumping right now. We did have a cold front last night, but you know how that is in Texas. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts. But I'm just pumped, I'm stoked. This is a spot that you can pretty much only fish from a kayak, so that's why we are on the axe today. Also, the slow is still in the shop, just getting some bells and whistles added to it. Nice little day of fishing ahead of us. We're gonna be out here for a few hours, see if we can crank them and yank them. Anyway, stick with us, stay tuned, and let's go get some fish. This is a pretty shad dense river from what I have heard and observed. So I'm gonna start things off with a spinnerbait, half ounce zinger. The water's honestly pretty clear for a dirty urban spot. So spinnerbait should do all right. I was anticipating much nastier water, but this is pretty damn clean. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna go between probably the spinnerbait and the crack and craw today to see what we can get going. To see what we can get, see if we can, if we can get them back. Got that big suck. There's one. There we go. First fish of the day. Hell yes. Oh, ho, ho. nice one too. Yeah. Oh, fat. Just so fat. That was dirty. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Let me get away from this pump. That thing is loud. Yeah, it's like sucking water in or something like that. Checker. Not a bad one. Man, I've said it a thousand times, but I'll say it once more. Don't sleep on the urban spots. They get overlooked. People think because it's dirty water, because you're fishing under a highway, there's nothing thriving in this ecosystem, but this is a pretty dope little river. I've never, like I said, fished here before, but just by like checking it out on Google Maps, I knew it had some serious potential. That's a good first fish, man. I've only been out here for like, I don't know, 15 minutes. That's about a short, stocky two pounder. Might even be a little female getting ready to spawn. Oh yeah, definitely a female, look at that. Just got that little, little red booty. <laughs> That's a gorgeous fish, dude. First of many, I hope. That one crunched the Kraken. Back in the water, our little guy goes. So sick. This whole season, I've just been like so stuck to throwing the bandito bug. And now that it's getting a little bit warmer uh, in Texas, I, I've now kind of leaned towards throwing the Kraken craw. The Kraken craw is a really good cold water bait too, but uh, you know, that bandito bug in the cold water in the early spring season just crushes. But this water temp's getting up in the mid 60s almost lower 70s right now. I'm throwing a little Alabama craw, Kraken uh, craw, and that one just, he just he just crunched it, man. So clutch. It's kind of weird throwing an Alabama craw in Texas, but it clearly works. This bank is a little bit deeper than the one behind me, and the sun is just beating down on it right now, so I think this side's a little bit warmer. Maybe what it might, might have helped me get that bite there. We are pretty far from the pump, so I don't, I don't really know. I don't know, we'll, we'll fish a little bit farther up. There's one. Good one, like pretty decent. Nice, yes, here we go. I was just talking about how I was thinking about maybe getting out of here and moving closer to the actual lake. And this guy's like, uh-uh, you're staying in the river. <laughs> I'm cool with that. It's way cooler fishing back here. There's like zero pressure and uh, apparently they're still pretty bitey. Oh, he just hit the kayak. <laughs> Dude, another good one. These are not bad fish. Very healthy for a stingy, dingy river. Dusty river. 
Look at that bass. That's number two of the day on the Kraken Crawl. Definitely tough for me to not time the Bandito bug this morning, but I had to try something different. Just an absolute beauty. Thanks for playing. Oh, how good. And that. <laughs> so sick. So sick. Oh, there's one. Dropped it. Oh no, he still got it. Oh, titties. Oh, me sideways. That thing's big, like five pounds. Look at this guy coming to your left. I don't know if he's on a bed. See him? It's like a five pounder all day. It's crazy how fish that big is up here in like just a few feet, a foot of water, honestly. We met the end of the line here. Pretty much. I mean, I guess we could go farther technically, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of superficial water. Didn't see too many bass. Saw like one really nice five pounder just bowling in the shadows. We came to the like, basically the end of the road, and there's tons of shad up here, tons of like little white bass, which I'm, I'm guessing are up here to spawn, but not a whole lot of largemouth. I would assume with this much bait, this much tiny white bass activity, there'd be some LMBs just around the corner. But I mean, maybe there is. I just could be doing a good job of hiding. So we're gonna fish our way back now. See if we can pick up a few more bats. I'm gonna try to fish a little bit differently than how I did uh, on the way up here, just because, you know, I don't want to like necessarily fish the same stuff and the same lures in an area that I, I've already covered. So we're gonna we're gonna peep some new areas. I'm gonna fish a different bank on the way out. Yeah, maybe we'll pull out a nice one. I mean, I've seen some big fish today. So clearly, oh my God, look at them all, hundreds. There's some of the smaller white bass I've seen though. They're very like, dude, those are very tiny usually up in these creeks you get some honkers it's like this year's spawn for god's sakes oh wow. okay cool well, there's life where there's life it's good it means that there's fish to be caught i dig it i feel like i'm i feel like i'm in the circus riding on a uh, what is it called unicycle especially with these big ass boots i gotta be the goofiest here on the creek right now it's like a three pound bass here I am fishing the left side and there's the three pound bass. I just can't catch a break. Oh, and then there's a spider on my lens. Get off there, Mr. Spider. You don't belong there. That's my GoPro, thank you. I know, it's so tough being a wiener dog. It'll be all right though. Okay, okay, we're off the water. We did it, we caught some fish. It wasn't the most stellar day, I will admit, but fishing new waters and catching fish is always a huge plus. We peeled out pretty quick though. I mean, we still have like a good amount of daylight, but the reason why I'm leaving early is because I gotta go pick up the boat. And that doesn't mean that we're done doing kayak fishing videos. I love the kayak scene. I think it's super relatable and not everyone out there has a big bass boat. I understand uh, that a lot of you guys like watching the yak videos, and the bank videos. So uh, just note that because I get my boat back doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop with the yak videos. Now that I got these two new beauties, I'm gonna be doing a lot more. That was fun, that was a good float. Um, but anyway, I'm peeling out, peacing out. We're gonna go pick up the rig because we've got a big send for tomorrow. Yes, another send. Uh, instead of West Texas, we're going like Southwest Texas. I, I guess you could call it South. It's on the border of uh, Mexico and Texas. I won't say the name of the lake, but uh, you guys will probably figure it out if you know anything about the legendary fishies and fisheries in Texas. But anyway, the mission starts um, on the 16th and today's the 15th. So we really need to get active. Otherwise, I would have stayed out there all day and, and, and tried to catch a, a, at least a third fish for today's video. I'm blabbering. Let's let's just get the boat. Let's hook up the, the albino slow and I'll meet you guys there. <laughs> Well guys, we just picked up the rig from Fun Sun. Oh, I miss you. I love you so much. We uh, we put, I think, some serious miles on this thing, or hours, I should say. Boats don't really go by miles. I uh, went in there and it was a 90 hour update. I think when I picked this thing up this season, it only had like 20, 20 hours. Is that even possible? 30 hours? It didn't have that many hours. But when I got it serviced, it was a 90 hour total that is on this 150 Merc. So we really ran this thing hard and we're gonna run it even harder the next three days. We shouldn't tell them where we're going, right? Keep it a secret. But we are gonna be returning to a place 
kind of like where we left off about a year ago today. Um, I'll just give you that much as a hint. But the boat's looking dirty, but good. We've got some new bells and whistles. I'll show you that once we get back to the crib. But most importantly, shout out to Fun on Sun for getting her all greased up, lubed up, and ready to go for yet another send. Meet you guys back at the crib. I, I had this plan and I completely forgot. I'm gonna take that boat off, put the trailer back on, take my car out of the garage, put the kayak trailer in the garage because we don't need those. We're using the slow, the Albano slow. Then I'm gonna close the garage, then I'm gonna put the boat in front of the big garage, then I'm gonna take the car and put it on the left side of the garage. Okay. Wiener dog, little tiny wiener. Oh, I forgot too. I have to also grab my wiener. Don't forget to grab your wiener, folks. It's the most important part of life, is always maintain full contact of your wiener. Dog, wiener dog, sorry. Should have filled in the blank there. Come on, wiener, let's go. We're gonna take the trailer and put it where this car was at. Had the Lexus in there, put the Lexus in the small garage. Where, honestly, it, it belongs, but that's kind of like my fishing part of the garage. And I put the trailer in here. And the boat is gonna go right here temporarily because we're gonna use the boat. This is my lesson for you guys. You don't need stuff. Stuff just creates more problems. It creates more cluster. I could open up a garage cell right now and probably make 200 bucks. I've got so much stuff that isn't being used. So this baby right here, she's about to get some use. There we go. Come on. Oh, she needs some grease. What's the matter with me? There you go. Okay, one question I have for you guys that I want you to drop a comment in in the comment section below is, what trip do you want to go on once this whole uh, Medela virus is over? I can't say the C word, otherwise they'll ban me from YouTube and social media for life. But seriously, on a serious note, what trip would you guys like to go on after this all blows away? Um, obviously, I can still fish in Texas as long as I'm doing it responsibly, but there's a lot of states right now where you can't even fish. Like Michigan was the next state to kind of take a step towards uh, keeping basically people, just not even anglers, but people off the water. They banned all watercrafts with outboard engines. You can still canoe and kayak and paddleboard. I guess you could take a bass boat out as long as it doesn't have an outboard. It doesn't make any sense, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of, oh, hang on, I need my shots. Even aside from fishing being banned, and I get that, I know, but it just sucks because that's what's endemic to, you know, us, you guys, myself. Fishing is huge, and when we can't do that, it's a bummer. But yeah, like I said, drop a comment. What's your dream trip after this is over? Um, why isn't this coming off? Ah, gotcha. Want me crank you, want me roll? All right, we're done. <laughs> Dude, this is so fun. I've never seen my driveway like this with the boats over here. The truck is outside. The trailer, I don't ever even bring the trailer. Usually that stays at the Guggen HQ. And the whip is in the, is in the little garage. Is Dude, is there something, I, we, do we need to tell them something? Oh, I know, I know. I want to show you the, the things I got on my boat. And then we'll wrap up today's video, I swear to God. Uh, since I got this boat, I've done legitimately nothing to it. I've added no extra graphs. I haven't upgraded any of the trolling motor parts or anything like that. Um, of course, I've done nothing to the trailer. The engine is just the 150, the Merc four stroke, um, but I finally decided to pull the trigger since I have been fishing so much and treat myself and treat the albino slow. And I got two new graphs. Uh, I'll show you them here in a second. Gotta get her naked. Woo, she's naked. Oh, dude, check her out. So this is a little toolie that you guys have probably seen me use um, fishing hard water. Um, holy we got a balls out mount. I didn't realize, that's expensive. Uh, I just said, hey, I trust you guys. Just put a mount on there that works. <laughs> that one definitely works. It's like I think the most expensive one you can get. That's why they call it balls out. And you just dig deep in your pocket and you go balls out. Anyway, um, this is a little 10 inch graph. It's got this uh, cool little feature called pan optics or poon optics, whatever you want to call it. So you basically get to see the fish eat your lure uh, real time. So that's on the front of my, tr yep, it is. It's on the front of my trolling motor which is nice because I've never had a boat with a front graph. I've owned two boats and none of them have had a uh, front transducer, which is pretty cool. Or at least one that I used. That's, that's actually really sick. This is gonna come to play uh, these next three days on our big send. And then over here, I got a little bit bigger graph. Um, again, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, uh, but obviously, because why would I be sponsored? Why would I be sponsored by Hummingbird and Garmin? It doesn't make any sense. But this is a, uh, this is a 12 inch. Solix, I had a nine inch Helix, which honestly I really like the Helix. It was just super, super simple and easy to use. 
But now we've got this. Damn, bro, look at that. That's some good quality. It's kind of weird though to have a hummingbird and a Garmin on a boat. Most guys run uh, Lowrance. Should I close out the video? Alex is so sick of filming me blabbering. We got a big day ahead of us too. We've got to get this boat not smelling so musty. And we've also got to get a lot of, a lot of rods rigged. We've got to pack clothes. We've got to make sure Lucky's got all of her stuff. And uh, we are on our way out the door for yet another springtime Texas sun. The spring is closing. I'm so pissed about it, but we're going to make it last and we will get that double digit eventually. I don't know about this spring, but we will make it happen. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys sticking with the end there. Uh, we just didn't catch that many fish. So I figured I'd keep you guys up to date and in the loop with my life. Big send hitting you guys uh, probably in the next upload. By the time you guys see this video, the trip will be done and we will have been just lush and full of many fish, hopefully, I'm hoping at least. Um, but anyway, I'm Peace Not Sign Out. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Like I said, and I always will say during these crazy times, be safe, stay healthy, and uh, most importantly, try to find some time to get out and catch fish, or maybe just get some fresh air, either or. Find some time for yourself and enjoy mother nature. But that's it, that's all. Thanks for watching, and as always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.